Hello and welcome to another episode of Modular in a Week. This is a DS7, Coron DS7 percussion synth. Uh, and in this episode we are going to make a clone of this. As many of the, so this was made in the 80s sometime, and as many of those synthesizer circuits, things, uh, people have during the years made clone of the, uh, clones of these uh, devices. So also for this one. So we're going to make uh, Mark Barre's uh, clone. I think I've had this apart and looked inside and checked that to his schematics and it seems very uh, genuine to this one. However, because this is done in the 80s, it does have a few parts or a, yeah, a few parts, uh, but mainly the big part that is obsolete nowadays is the CA3080. Uh, so we're going to exchange that for a LM13700 instead. Uh, and we are going to do some more uh, modifications. Uh, that I'll show uh, as well. Before we dive in, I would like to say thank you to my Patreons who uh, over on patreon.com uh, support me in this work of building this modular and trying to get all these modules done. Uh, and uh, you can also be a patron, patron, uh, over there if you want to if not you can go over there and find some free stuff there uh, and it's always a few interesting things there too with that said let's dive straight into this look at the schematics and a few uh, changes we can make the circuit i'm going to make i found on mark Barret's homepage i'm guessing he's a french guy because of the uh, domain name um, so and his schematic seems to be very I, I'm guessing that is a, an exact clone of the uh, Coron DS7 or as mine is called PAL DS7 this is a p drum sync mine is a percussion synth but they all seem to be quite similar anyway mine has one more transistor and a resistor on a small board. I'm not sure what that does. But except for that, they seem to be the same. Uh, so on this page, he says a lot on how to build this. Uh, here's the schematics, and this is the schematics I follow uh, mainly. But the CA3080 over here, I uh, replace for an LM13700. Uh, and I'll show you the pin configuration I'm using instead. Also, because I don't have his board, I don't really care for which op amp I'm using, so I always took the op amp that was closest to me. Uh, so that's why if you look at my schematics, there's a few changes to these pins, but it's the same. It's an LM324 I'm using. I'm just using it uh, different pins. There's also the parts list which is good to have. Uh, the 7805 which it has here is not in the schematics uh, but I did a simple uh, 5 volt regulator with a 7805 as well. I'll show that circuit as well. Also, the C5 here, it says 0U1, which I interpreted as 0 0.1 microfarad. But in the parts list, C5 is actually 1 nanofarad. So I'm guessing this one is the correct one. So I changed uh, my C5 to 1 nanofarad after uh, having to error check uh, an, a faulty... Uh, LM13700 actually so but I did in that check I switched that as well and here's also a front panel example funnily enough there's no output here so uh, 
I'm going to make this one but slightly different. Also I skipped the volume uh, because none of my other drum has a volume out so I'm doing that in the mixer anyway. Also when I looked around uh, actually when I was looking just to make sure that you could use a LM13700 instead of the CA3080 I found this uh, thread on electromusic.com uh, I'll also link this one in the description so here they talk about this one and there's a few nice modifications so I did this one uh, for a bit deeper bass and you can add an external input for the VCA if you want to do that to use the CA3080 in this one as a VCA or if you want to use external noise along with the sound already in the DS7 may almost making it into a DS8 because a DS8 is a DS7 with a noise source uh, and also down here a bit you can add a switch this I also did this one uh, they say to connect it with a 1 meg resistor to 9 volts but I'm not using 9 volts I'm using 12 volts from my um, modular power supply so instead I use a 100k connected to 5 volts and that just making sure and it works shouldn't be a problem so this uh, thread on electromusic.com has a lot of interesting modifications which I've done a few of them in my design and as usual I don't have the front panel design done yet or, or cut out but this is the design I had in mind and also with the modifications with the extra push button and of course the output jack so here's the finished board before I attach all the pots and jacks um, I'd like to show one of the benefits of the Proto and that is that because it is numbered and lettered the way down and across you can easily just when doing the following the schematics and striking everything out that you have done you can also just write that J16 J16 that one is connected to this pot the VCO pot and then you know that and you don't need to worry about this and everything you can do this all the way Q16 is over there I have one left that I haven't striken out here so I need to connect this one before I finish this and that's the F1 so I know it is F1 is supposed to be connected to pin 1 of the CA th uh, LM13700 uh, so I know that F1 is supposed to go down there and those are really good things uh, to keep things in order but it's quite a compact board and I also have the uh, a 7805 here because I need 5 volts so none of the input pins uh, for power that I usually use or this pad is used I get power in here plus 12 volt in ground and then I just patch that into the uh, the central bus and I get plus 5 volts and ground anyway if you have a plus 5 volt Eurac power supply you can patch that in to any of the central buses with this little pad over here all right it's uh, connected here and you hear it along with a few other drums so let me just uh, disconnect everything else and we can just listen through what what kind of sounds we can make with this one all right let's find a beat which suits our need and let's just try a few twiddle the knobs and hear a few sounds
actually let's use the button and then that way I can make uh, shorter triggers. So this is the sweep, so it goes from this one to that one, there's a downward slope. There's one mod more I need to do. I feel that the this it's it's not deep enough. I'd like to have it a bit deeper. Here we're at that 70s uh, tom sound that was very popular in the disco era. Now we add the LFO. It is Halloween soon. was a very nice distinctive ding.
and we have another drum module. Uh, this one could be said to be more of an effects module. It is kind of, it is a percussion module, but not drum as such that with the wobbling things and stuff like that. So, but uh, I'd still say it's in the drum percussion part. Uh, with the yeah, with the additions of the modifications, we make it even better, cooler, whatever. Um, and uh, not sure if the because I didn't have the 50k potentiometers, I have 100k now, so the sound might change a bit when I add the uh, 50k pots. I'll have to see that, but I don't think so. But I'll leave that open. As when it comes to more modules, I know I've done a lot of drum modules now, but it's it's so much fun making drum modules, and they are so rewarding directly. So, and the next day in this series, uh, I can reveal if you hadn't already known that is going to be uh, sequencers, and we really need sequencers now. Uh, but there is a few more drum modules that I still want to do. Uh, somehow I will have to uh, find a place for these as well. I hope, or I'll have to make a drum modules day 58 or something. With that said, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, show that with a thumbs up and I will see you in the next episode. Questions, comments in the comments as usual. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.